In clinical practice, is it appropriate for practitioners to recommend specific inflammation reduction approaches to HIV positive patients, especially approaches that are already commonly used in this patient population, such as aspirin, statins, and exercise? So that's a really good question and it comes up uh, all the time. Uh, there's been all this talk about inflammation and what can I actually do for my patients now? Um, and there are, of course, uh, some commonly used medicines that have anti-inflammatory properties like aspirin uh, and statins. Um, uh, and, and then there's also exercise, which um, has been proven to have anti-inflammatory benefits in elderly populations. And then uh, just recently, a, a study in HIV-infected patients um, you know, shows that exercise, even moderate exercise, uh, can decrease uh, inflammation. So in my own clinical practice, um, uh, I do recommend exercise to all of my patients. Uh, uh, and it's not just the usual doctor, eat a healthy diet and uh, you should exercise to be healthy. But I actually talk with my patients about the science. Uh, I talk about the, you know, how inflammation we think may be increasing the risk of a lot of diseases like cardiovascular disease, cancer, osteoporosis in our patients. Um, uh, and exercise actually blocks a lot of these key inflammatory pathways. Um, uh, and um, so there's really very little downside to exercise, uh, and I recommend it to all my patients. And sometimes talking about the biology with patients uh, sometimes is a little bit of a hook uh, that gets people you know, a little bit more focused uh, on, on its potential benefits. And so, so I talk about that. As far as aspirin and statins, there have been some pilot studies uh, that show uh, some uh, uh, favorable immunologic effects uh, of, um, of, uh, of, of statins and randomized control uh, uh, studies, uh, and also uh, aspirin and at least uh, pilot uncontrolled studies in, in reducing um, uh, inflammation and treated HIV disease. Uh, but neither of those uh, uh, drugs uh, has been tested in a clinical endpoint trial uh, to see whether it actually improves health of people uh, living with HIV, decreases heart attacks and strokes and decreases cancer and other things. And um, there is a, a potential uh, a study that may happen in the very near future of statins uh, to determine whether there really are clinical benefits of statins uh, because there, there are favorable uh, data uh, already on these uh, immunologic markers. Uh, and aspirin is a little bit further behind uh, statins, but there's still a lot of interest uh, in, in studying it. And right now, my approach uh, as a clinician uh, is um, uh, uh, to be a little bit more aggressive uh, with my patients with, statin and, uh, uh, with statins and aspirin uh, uh, in the absence of clinical evidence um, uh, uh, so far uh, for them, uh, but recognizing that there's no, there's no clinical evidence uh, for health benefits yet. So, so I'm not recommending it to everybody, but people who are particularly high risk, um, uh, I do tend to be a little bit more aggressive with aspirin and statins, but we need those clinical endpoint trials to really tell us whether they improve health.